this thing had more juice in it. So I've had this tortilla solio for a little over a week now, and I can't help myself but wonder what the factory far driver controller is actually capable of and what the factory tune looks like if we're able to make any sort of changes. So I bought a Bluetooth dongle so we can connect to it and find out together. I'm going to start by removing the seat and pull the battery out so we can gain access to the top side of the controller. There's a cover on top of the fire driver controller that you need to remove. It's just four Phillips screws, two on each side. And that's all you have to do to gain access to the controller. Then this is the connector that we're using to plug the Bluetooth dongle onto the controller. So you just plug right in. We're just plugging the battery back in temporarily so we can test out the app. Okay, now that we have everything temporarily connected, we're gonna key on, pull up the far driver app. You see the Bluetooth dongle is blinking red, so we should be able to connect to it. Well, let's go to Paras and then open pro enable. Okay, controller is now bound. Rated voltage. I've been super curious to see if I can change this to 72. Yeah? Really? If I'm able to change that to 72, does that mean we can put the Amorge battery in today? Because I was looking at this controller and it looks very similar to a Far Driver ND72200, but the stamping on it says KG48V70, which I'm not very familiar with. But besides the voltage, max line current was set to 50 amps so it is supposed to put out about 2000 watts at 48 volts max phase current is already set to 240. okay so it doesn't allow you to input any higher max line current than 70 so it does have its limitations and it automatically changed the overvolt protection to 90.7 volts which is perfect since the Amor uh, 72 volt battery fully charges at like 84.3 volts Let's save this and then let's go put a 72 volt Amorch battery in this thing. So this is the battery that we're going to be experimenting with today. This is a 72 volt, 20 amp hour, max continuous discharge, 60 amps, 120 amp peak. This is what I use on my Razer MX650. I briefly test fitted this into that area just as a joke last time, but it actually fit really well. So now we're actually just going to put it in and see what happens. And I already know that a lot of you guys are gonna ask in the comments what the dimensions are of this thing. So let's just go over that real quick. So five and a half by six by eight and a half are the exact dimensions of this battery. Let's take this cover off the far driver controller so we can remove this cable. This is your first time working with a far driver controller. These three middle wires are the phase wires for the motor. This is the negative terminal and positive terminal for the battery. Now I'm gonna take this QS8 harness and replace this side with ring style terminals to replicate the original harness. like that. In all honesty, I have no idea if this is going to work, but we're going to find out what happens at least. Worst case, I do have another far driver controller here in the garage in case this one gets damaged during this experiment. And we'll put in an ND72530 on this thing, but that's a little bit overkill for the battery and the bike. And I don't really want to take it off my SX500 project, but if we have to, we have to.
Actually, before we put the battery in, let's put the cover back on. Slide the battery in carefully. There's literally just enough slack for us to plug this back in. And here's the moment I've been waiting for. I'm pretty nervous about how that fits. Oh, so no tension on the bracket. Just presses right in. So the battery fits nice and snug. I'll just put like a little bit of pressure here. The battery is exactly the perfect dimension for this bike. Here's how the battery looks from the side. Everything with the controller is tucked. Covers back on. Only thing I don't have fully secured yet is the charge cable. I'm gonna figure out a permanent solution for that. Once we find out that this is 100% fully functional, that it's gonna stay in there. So let's go turn this thing on. See what it shows. Okay, well, voltmeter says 82.4 volts. See what it does on mode one. I'm glad to see that it appears to be functioning just fine. So let's go put the seat back on and fully charge the battery. Before we take the bike out, I'm gonna throw on an LED headlight because this bike could definitely use one. The one we're gonna be using today is by Akrunu. It's LED and uh, it's a chargeable one. I decided to go with this just to minimize the amount of wiring that's needed on this bike. It actually comes fully charged as they ship it. And there's four different modes. Looks like the first mode turns on the outer two LEDs. Second one is just a center. Third setting should be the brightest since it's all three. And then the fourth one just flashes all three. This one just charges by USB. So basically you would just be mounting this on the center of your handlebar or wherever you want. And then you slide the headlight on, position it in place and tighten it. And that is pretty much your full install. So this is really the easiest solution for a bolt-on headlight you can throw on any pit bike. I'm probably gonna get one from my Razor as well. If you're interested in checking this out, I'll have a link to it in the description below. Jesus, that's freaking bright, look at that. You know what, while we're here, I'm gonna take this front fender off since I'm just not the biggest fan of how it looks anyway. This thing, it looks a little goofy being flat and cut square and all. I wish they went with like a CRF 50 type of fender or something. Please comment below if you happen to know of a front fender that takes very little modification to mount on this fork. Hopefully the stock controller doesn't fry it immediately. I definitely gotta do something about the chain and sprocket setup. It's still a little bit noisy after putting some miles on it. Somebody recommended that I should tighten it, just add a little bit of tension to the chain, which I definitely will when we swap out the sprocket. Okay, so what we found out there is in mode two, when the display is showing 45, we're only going 37. So this is definitely not reading correctly. You know what, I'm gonna make some changes on the tune. Let's open up the far driver app. Let's just go full speed on mode three, 100% power. Okay, let's see what that does. So it definitely makes a lot more power and torque overall, but it doesn't seem to have changed that top speed by too much. To give you guys some perspective, I'm 181 pounds currently. Hmm. 
There is a small gain in torque and top speed, but the difference is so minimal. I'm gonna reach out to my buddy, Florida Razors, or some of you guys might know him as Moose Rides, uh, to see if he can look over my fire driver settings, just to see if there's any changes we can make with the tune, to see if we can get a little bit more speed and power out of this bike. For the meantime, let's go throw on more parts on it. In other news, we just got a package delivered by UPS from Electro & Co. This should be all the parts needed to get my SX500 back on the road with better braking and more importantly, more power. So make sure you stay tuned to this channel if you don't want to miss out on that video. Okay, so I like the way it looks without the fender, but this area just seems a little bit too open for me. So we're going to cover that up with a number plate. Look at that. That definitely looks a lot better than without it. It's like the perfect size for the 2DO. Another thing I want to address is this chain slack. What bothers me the most about this bike is the amount of noise that I'm getting off throttle. And I know it has a lot to do with this chain sliding on this guard. Uh, I'm going to see if I can reduce that noise by reducing the slack on the chain, but we don't want to reduce it by too much. You want some slack with this type of swing arm design. And while we're doing that, we're also going to be swapping out the stock 62 sprocket with a 53 tooth, which should result in a higher top speed with a trade-off of a little bit less lower end torque. I also really like the satin black finish. I think it goes a lot better with the look of the bike instead of this big chrome one that comes stock with it. So to take the rear wheel off, you just need a 14 mil on the right side and a 17 mil on the left side. Hopefully we don't have to shorten the chain, but I'm thinking we're gonna have to take a couple links out. It's just a 10 millimeter. Yep, same exact bolt pattern. And look at the difference in that. It's definitely quite a bit smaller. I saw some 40 tooth sprockets and 42 tooth, but I think that's just way too tall. The motor would run super hot with that tall of gearing, so I don't recommend doing that. We're definitely gonna have to take a couple links out. I'm gonna start off by removing maybe four links. Now I'm gonna take a cover off in front of the sprocket, make it a little bit easier to feed. Just gonna leave the cover off until we get the wheel fully installed. The smaller spacer goes on the right side. We're not gonna tighten the axle just yet. I wanna make sure that the chain is the proper length and tension correctly before you do that. Yep, four links was the perfect length to remove. Now that I got the chain to the right length, I'm gonna do some final adjustments to tension the chain correctly and make sure that the rear wheel is pointing straight. Once you got the rear wheel centered and the chain slack is adjusted, it's gonna have to tighten down the lock nuts on the axle block adjustment. No need to crank down on them too much. It just keeps this bolt in place. The rear wheel is secured by the axle bolt, of course. I've been thinking about the factory motor compartment and what I can potentially fit in there when we 
eventually burn the stock motor out, which, you know, I'm not expecting a higher voltage setup to be reliable. That's why this is actually not a recommendation. We're pretty much just experimenting together to see what the factory components are capable of. I want to try to fit either the Kunray KR5V, I think is what it's called, or the Soshin motor in there. Since it's got the bottom mounts, I wouldn't be able to fit the EC4P style motors. Okay, so I've been going back and forth with Giovanni or Florida Razors regarding my tune and I think he figured out what's going on here. The ratios and speed and the original tune was all jacked up. They were all over the place. So I changed all the settings to replicate my Razer SX500 tune. I just changed the limit speed to 4000 RPM, LQ400, and changed all the ratios so it's at 100% till it goes to 4000, then it tapers off. This is not a tutorial. I'm just showing you what I'm experimenting with. So I'm still leaving the max line current at 60 amps since that's what the battery is rated for. Um, max phase current 240, so we'll see how this does. But before we go anywhere, shout out to Giovanni or Florida Razors. Make sure you check out his YouTube and his Instagram account. He's been very helpful with my last couple razor builds. Well, that's certainly different, but we'll see how it acts up with load on it. Well, the drivetrain's definitely a lot quieter since we tightened up the chain tension. Man, I knew this thing had more juice in it. See what this thing's got. There it is guys. I'm pretty sure this is the first 50 mile an hour GPS measure to Tio Salil. Man, I knew this thing had more juice in it. At this point, we're pretty much approaching the max capability of the factory controller and motor. I'm sure you could probably squeeze a little bit more out of it if you want to, but I'm not even sure how reliable this is gonna be at this point. We're just gonna have to find out together. Remember, this is not a recommendation for me to do this. I just did this as an experiment to answer some questions, and I'm sure some of you guys were pretty curious about what would happen if we hook up a 72 volt battery to this bike. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. 50 miles an hour on a pit bike is pretty serious. I'm probably gonna leave the bike as it is for a little while and just enjoy it. If the motor happens to burn out in the future, maybe we upgrade to a Kunray KR5V and a larger, like a ND72 300 or 360 controller. Let me know if you guys have any specific suggestions for an additional upgrade for later on. But if you guys are interested in getting more information on this bike, I'll have a link to 2DO's website. I think they're actually having a sale starting today or tomorrow, like an extra $65 off. So I'll have a link to that specific listing in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects such as the 2DO or any of my razors, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.